Thanks for coming out on a Wednesday night. I'm Dr. Mike Rocha. I am a uh, native of New Bedford. I went to New Bedford High School. Uh, I'm a cardiologist uh, in the area, and I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. But what I think is a very important film that people need to see, um, you know, we're faced with a public health crisis, uh, not only in our own community, but across the country and also across the world. And we need to, we need to take the time, uh, unfortunately, to see some things that may be unpleasant for us to see in terms of what's gone wrong uh, and how we got to where we are right now. The one thing that I'm also very confident is that there's a lot of smart people that care about others. And that if we all put our efforts together, that we can change what needs to happen. Uh, Tonight's film, Fed Up, uh, is one that's taken many years for the producers to put together, and they're still fighting a battle against things that are very challenging uh, to change in our diet, uh, because these things that we are, we've been consuming for many years are hard to break those habits. So I want to thank all of you for taking the time, because that shows that you care about uh, yourselves and your community and that we're going to try to figure out how we can become healthier in New Bedford, in the region, in the country, and in the rest of the world, because that's really what we need to do is all work together. So thank you, and we're going to watch the film. After the film, um, we're going to have a short uh, PowerPoint and discussion to try to talk about how we can think about our own community, what our resources are, uh, and uh, I'm going to invite my, my good friend, Dr. Tanya Feek, who I went to high school with, Kim Ferreira from uh, Mass in Motion in Bedford, and Dr. David Weed, and we're going to have a discussion afterwards, and uh, let's play the film. Something's going on. Kids are being told the biggest lie they will ever hear in their lives. She cannot, literally cannot, calm herself down. In the past quarter century, the number of overweight children has grown from 1 in 20 to nearly 1 in 5. It used to be you had one or two heavy set kids in the class. Now we get eight or ten. This year, for the first time in the history of the world, more people will die from the effects of obesity than from starvation. This has a ramifications far beyond obesity itself. It's the small it is the cost of this. Half a trillion dollars in additional health care costs. Half a trillion. The American Academy of Family Physicians partnered up with Coca-Cola. Isn't this a conflict of interest? I hope that the American Academy of Family Physicians is looking for ways to... Researchers say obesity is causing more and more cases Uh, we have to take that away from our kids, I believe. Uh, 
this is data. So I'm going to take you through quickly some slides here to kind of emphasize, first of all, where our own community is. So uh, this was taken from South Coast Health Systems Community Needs Assessment. Um, these are using the districts of uh, Fall River um, and New Bedford. And when we look at uh, the number of students that are healthy weight, um, it's actually fairly close to the statewide average of 64. However, when we look at our children in terms of Fall River and New Bedford, um, we have a higher percentage of obese uh, students. 19% uh, for New Bedford, 17 for Fall River, as opposed to 16% of the rest of the state. Um, this was exciting news earlier this year in New Bedford. Uh, this was taken from um, the Standard Times. Um, all the students of New Bedford Public Schools will receive free breakfast and lunch regardless of family income. Um, the, the superintendent, Pia Durkin, was very excited about this, as was Mayor John Mitchell. Uh, this is good news. And I think that, you know, when we see things like this and we see this film, this gives us the opportunity to, to, to think about how can we, when we have this opportunity and a captive audience with our children, we have to start thinking about how we can work together to make those options healthier, okay? And that's something, I don't have all the solutions to that, but we need to start that discussion. Um, to come back, and since the movie spent more time with the, with, the, with the children, we have to also look at, you know, in our own community, what's the challenges for our adults? And um, in terms of greater uh, than 75% of the South Coast adults, uh, do not get the five fruits and vegetables as recommended today. Uh, just almost 14% in New Bedford. Um, actually, the uh, Fall River was 19% and 18% statewide. Uh, in terms of uh, adults engaging in physical activity over the last month, uh, both communities score less than 50% of people exercising regularly. Uh, the percentage of patients that are overweight or obese is increasing. And I look down here in terms of, um, compared to the rest of the state, just skip down to the obesity number, 22%. In New Bedford and Fall River, we're talking above 30%. Um, this is a uh, community profile put out earlier this year that was really, uh, for me, one of the things that really started me towards thinking about how we can try to help our community in a different way. Um, this profile looks at age over 65, so pa patients in our community that are um, above 65. If we look at New Bedford, uh, I want you to pay attention here to we are in the single digits for uh, COPD or uh, emphysema, hypertension, heart failure, and four more chronic diseases. So we actually do have a population that's sicker than a lot of the different parts of the state. And I will say that you know, many of these have links to obesity and, what, and, and again, um, other risk factors, but that is one part, especially hypertension. And we do know that for congestive heart failure, um, that we do have a correlation with obesity. One of the good things about New Bedford, it's very walkable, but we're not getting that done. Um, the, compared to the rest of the state, we have higher rates of depression, diabetes, stroke, COPD, hypertension, and heart disease. Uh, we're more likely to forego uh, visits to the doctors due to costs. We have greater hospital admissions, more emergency room visits, uh, more, hospital, more nursing home stays, more home health care visits, and we take more monthly prescriptions. And we're also less likely to take health promotion steps such as exercise, higher rates of obesity, more current smokers than the rest of the state. So if we take a look from this study here, uh, the, the Healthy Aging Collaborative, um, we're only hitting 20% for five fruits and vegetables a day, 31% for obesity, and 23% for the rest of the state. Physical activity in the last month, 58% versus 72%. Self-reported fair or poor health, um, we're not really feeling so good about ourselves these days. Satisfied with life, 71% versus 81%. Uh, ever di diagnosed with depression, we're about 5% higher there. Um, and I put a couple of my good friends up here, John Pierre Marks, who came from San Diego and did a Healthy Mind, Healthy Body conference earlier this year, and my friend Loretta Roach, who actually will be doing a uh, stress reduction, uh, Mind Over Stress, on October 22nd at um, UMass Dartmouth. So, one of the things that many of you have been seeing that I've been talking about is, you know, we're trying to figure out ways to get healthy. Um, exercise is important. How we eat is important, as this film demonstrates. Uh, and also dealing with stress, okay? 
letting go and living now are just incredibly important because if you think about it, stress really leads to a lot of the things that gets us, get us into trouble. Um, you know, a lot of our bad habits are a result of stress, overeating, risky behaviors, um, alcohol, drug abuse, all these things can be linked back to how we deal with our day-to-day -day lives. But to not, I don't want to focus any further on some of the things that are negative because there's actually a lot of really good things that happen in this community um, that I didn't start to know about until I, until I started to look at what our own community can do. Um, Kim Ferreira, who's here with us today, is Director of Mass in Motion, um, was key in terms of leading the charge for having uh, markets in New Bedford. There's a lot of uh, food deserts uh, throughout the city of New Bedford and there, this program has put vegetables uh, back into the markets and in stores or poor markets that are actually able to get with this program uh, have I been, been identified and to date there's six markets uh, right uh, around the community of New Bedford that are participating in this program to try to make fruits and vegetables more accessible to those that can't, that can't have them or can't make it to the supermarket. The other thing that Mass in Motion has been key about doing is also talking about trying to make sure that the restaurants that are trying to provide healthier eater, eating options are being recognized as well. Um, many of these are, the, in order to qualify, uh, the, the, uh, the restaurants have to provide three sides uh, of fruits or non-fried vegetables. And again, I'd like to say that, you know, again, they're trying to make sure that also that in terms of the default beverages, oftentimes uh, that water is, is, is along those lines. And right now, there are, these are the restaurants that are participating in New Bedford. And this information here uh, is available on the, on, on the internet. Uh, the other thing that uh, happens every year in New Bedford is that they have a summer beverage chan uh, challenge. And they look to challenge the residents in New Bedford to make a pledge for the summer to give up sugary beverages, not just sodas, but sweetened beverages such as sports drinks, as well as fruit juices. And I'd like anybody who's a farmer to please stand up. Anybody here? Anybody that's a farmer? To recognize that we do have fantastic farms in this community, and this lists many of them, uh, and also the agricultural partnership uh, that's uh, in the South Coast here. And I would encourage all of you to take the time to put money back into our own community. And first of all, the produce is so much better um, than what you're going to be able to get that's being shipped thousands of miles to make it to the supermarket. And you know, if you can shake somebody's hand that's in there making, you know, growing the food, boy, that really brings the community back. And I think that if we can continue to grow the farms, the farmers markets, and make that determined effort, it's going to make a tremendous difference for all of us in our community. We all can eat healthy, and I thank all the farmers that are doing the hard work out there. The other things in the community that we're looking, to, that, that people are doing include sharing the harvest at the Y, which is providing a food uh, to the food pantries in both in uh, New Bedford and Fall River. And it's also teaching uh, people that volunteer for this pro these programs about how to grow food um, and, and also about nutrition. Since 2006, it's grown 200,000 pounds of fresh fruits and, uh, fruits and vegetables, and 100% of the produce goes to local food pantries. Um, one of the things here, and I'd like to just briefly talk about this, there's a movie, Hung Hungry Not Hopeless, that uh, several of the uh, uh, 18s actually from New Bedford Public Schools um, talked about the hunger problem. So we're talking about malnutrition, not only people eating or overeating uh, and the obesity, but we also have to be mindful uh, about the issue with malnutrition. And I think that they, I'm looking forward to this. This film I think is going to be, uh, I believe it says, it is this Sunday, and that's actually going to be shown here, and I'm planning on attending that. I look forward to that. But they also collaborated with New Bedford Public Schools, um, the um, Life Food Pantry, and also Sharing the Harvest. Um, anybody here from Marion Institute? No one's here right now, so that's somebody who's here earlier. 
Um, I'd like to uh, take my hat off to the Grow Education Program there, uh, which is currently uh, involving the Bedford Public Schools. Uh, the goal of, by 2018 is to have a garden in every school. Right now, um, these schools here are currently participating, and I think that that's really exciting to, to teach kids uh, from growing the food and then consuming it and how to cook it uh, is, is really critical. Um, and just to kind of go quickly through what the rest of the country is doing, uh, grow, Growing Power, Will Allen is working on doing urban farming out of uh, Wisconsin. And he's, uh, he's a uh, ex-NBA basketball player uh, whose family was, uh, was a family of farmers. Uh, and he's doing some great work to try to get uh, farming uh, more accessible in his region but throughout the country. Uh, Stephen Ritz is in uh, the Bronx, New York, New York, and he started using uh, empty lots uh, and uh, growing gardens there and now has developed things where he has uh, green towers and green walls in his classroom. Um, and many of his students have gone on uh, to, to actually get jobs within the agricultural business and learn how to, how to, to farm to grow. Um, and I think that he's in an equally challenging uh, location in the Bronx, and if they can do it there, then we can do things here. Uh, Tony Giraci, the cafeteria man, um, he's actually currently in Memphis Public Schools, and they're really working to use a farm down there and to have uh, less processed foods. Uh, he was originally in Baltimore, uh, and there's a movie out on him in terms of his crusade to try to get real food back into the schools. And this is a program up in Boston, Fresh Trucks, that's retrofitted buses, and they're going to take the fruit and vegetables to the community. Uh, another program in Los Angeles is taking, uh, in, in a very poor area there, and they're providing them with either allowances or grocery. Uh, to 10 families and also giving them uh, classes on health, nutrition, and cooking to not only... So I think one of the things is, is that while we secure fresh local produce, um, we also need to make sure that we teach our community how to cook. We need to make sure that not only do they have the tools um, in terms of the raw ingredients, but we also have to be able to make that important that they learn how to cook again. Um, and I wanted to just talk about this, this will be coming out fed up on the south coast, there's a little spin-off uh, that Dr. David Weed here um, has spearheaded where we talk about, you know, again, things that we can do to change our diet and challenges that we have within the south coast. Um, and I was, uh, I was glad to participate in this. Uh, the, the, the movie is done and we'll be looking to show this in smaller venues and, and continue the discussion of how we can change things locally. Um, I want to thank all our sponsors tonight, uh, Hawthorne Medical being the major sponsor, uh, Brandon Woods, a Diagnosis Life, uh, Ball River Partners for a Healthier Community, Down to Earth, Silverbrook Farms, WJFD, uh, Grady New Bedford Health Center, don't think I'm, uh, and the ER Physicians Group at St. Luke's Hospital. And I want to, um, anybody that's, uh, who is a sponsor, if you please stand up, and I want to thank you. I think, I think Thomas Edison's quote here is great, the doctor of the future will give no medicine but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, in cause, in prevention of disease. And I really think that that's where we're at at this point. We really need to do, you know, we have lots of medicines and we have lots of surgeries, but I think that we need to get to the root cause and prevent disease. And I'm going to end with this slide here and say that may we reach out to one another, lift each other up, and walk down the path to happiness, health, and well-being, and let it be now.